Hey, this is Derek Murphy of Creativity. I'm going to talk about making your blog header um, specifically for an author website if you sell books, but this could really be for any type of blogging. And I'm currently rebuilding my website in DV. So some of the things that I'll show you how to do, you can only do um, in DV, which is a WordPress theme. So this is what I have so far. Um, I really like the idea of having a really large full width background art um, that kind of hooks emotion right away, it looks really cool, especially for fiction, you really want to communicate the benefits. So before I even get into any content um, or like the books themselves, I want pretty early to start giving them samples. So rather than telling them about my books, I want them to start off on the homepage, reading samples, start reading right away, start reading chapter one, um, stuff like that. So what I do have in the menu is this free book, um, which will just click to my opt-in page so they can click there if they want to they can sign up to my email list they can get a free book which is good to have in my menu except it's not totally clear what they're going to get when they click this and also even though i really like the way this looks um, aesthetically visually i'm also using up a lot of space so they have to scroll down just to see any information i don't have a tagline here which i probably should have telling them like what exactly I write, you know, I'm Derek Murphy, I write fiction, I write urban fantasy or sci-fi, some kind of a tagline or hook would be a good idea. They're not going to care about, you know, about me or my books or the blogs. They're not going to care about this menu at all because I haven't given them anything um, that they're interested in yet. Now, I might choose to leave it this way anyway because I think having that first impression, that really impactful, um, nice design can go a long way of getting them to scroll down and, and to stick around a little bit if it looks really cool, as opposed to just cramming them with a bunch of options or choices or information, um, which can be overwhelming. So I might test it out. You kind of want to test a few things out and see how it converts with your audience before you make firm decisions just based on design. I would definitely prefer to just make it the way I want to make it and, and not worry about whether or not it's working, but that's not smart. So I also have to factor in maybe I need to do some things um, that will have more conversion to readers who don't think it looks as cool as I think it looks. So the first thing I want to try to do is add some kind of bar right down here underneath the header, even if I leave all this um, how it is right now. So I was playing with a couple things, something like social media icons. All I've done is added, um, there are plugins and stuff where you can add in social media icons. This one's actually wrong. I should be using a circle for the Twitter as well. Um, the problem with most plugins is they're not going to have the right options for an author. So you can see I've added in Goodreads, I've added in BookBub, um, and also straight to my Amazon author profile. So the only way, because I don't think there's a plugin that does all that, the only way I've found to do it is um, find a bunch of little icons, size them the way that you want. So these are just individual. Um, I'll show you actually, this is my DV builder. So if I go under here, this is just a text module. And under text settings, I've just added media. I've added these pictures. Um, later, I'll go back and click on these and add a link to each of my social media sites. Um, I haven't done that yet because I'm just playing around. You can also get rid of this one so it's a little higher. So that was kind of my first idea. Actually, I have it something like this um, right now. So previously, I was thinking sign up to join our review team or sign up for the latest new releases and just have two main buttons. Um, it looks a little unwieldy. I like symmetry, so having the social media buttons and then these two buttons here is a little bit too much. Um, I could just put two buttons here, let just sign up for the review team or sign up for the, the latest new releases. Um, I think that's kind of nice. But for the moment, I change it this way. So I have join almost 10,000 readers in our review team, and then there's a link here that goes straight to my Facebook page. Um, it's not exactly the review team, but once I get them to like my Facebook page, I can try to follow up and get them to join my um, ARC team, which is a Facebook group that's tied to my Facebook page. The difference is um, it's easier to get people to like your page because it takes less engagement. The problem is Facebook probably won't show your content to your reader. So on my Facebook page, even though I have 10,000 followers, um, I might get like 100 views on the content I post there. So you can boost that with lots of engagement, but it's difficult to do. You can also, though, if you have a Facebook page, you can run ads to the people who like your page. So it sucks that you have to pay to reach your own readers. Um, it's much better to get them on your email list. 
but it is kind of nice just for social proof to say, you know, join almost 10,000 readers. It's kind of nice because otherwise they still don't know anything about me or my books or what I write, but there's some social credibility here just by, um, just by the numbers, basically. So I might say something like that. I could also link this one, subscribe by email to get the new, the latest new releases. Um, but then I have this really big button over here, sign up for new releases. So that might work a little bit better than this free book. And I don't really want double buttons like this, but the thing is on mobile, they're really not going to see this menu anyway. Um, one other thing that's kind of cool, you'll see that in the DV Builder, this is just um, a black bar. And I was trying for a long time to figure out how to set a transparent menu over the background art. And in the first version of this, I had to make kind of a, I used custom code to add this art, um, which is by Marilla Santos, actually. It's a really nice piece of graphic design. Um, Marilla Santana, actually. So what I had to do to get this menu is this black bar was down below. And then with the DV Builder, I just changed. Um, it's really easy to drag and drop things around and move where they appear on the page. So if I go up here and click this to edit this bar, I go to design and then spacing. You can see I have a custom margin of minus 220%. Um, and I can actually just grab this bar and move it around. So accidentally what happened, and I didn't know that this was going to happen, but when I put my bar above the other background art, um, it shows up as transparent, which is pretty awesome. That's what I actually wanted. However, if I go down here and I can check and see how it's going to look on mobile, um, and on mobile, everything is condensed, and I don't even see that menu. They'd have to click on this menu um, to get it to come out. So part of the problem with having a free offer in a menu, even though I think it's a pretty cool feature, is that a lot of people aren't even going to see it um, on mobile devices, whereas if I have a big button like this, they're going to see it and it says sign up for new releases. So they'll probably click the button and the button could go straight to my opt-in offer. Um, and there's, there's a couple ways to do it. I could build a little pop-up. Um, DV has a plugin that's made by the same company called Bloom and Bloom makes it really easy to build opt-in boxes. There are other like third-party um, plugins that can make sign up boxes or subscription boxes for email, but I'm going to try using Bloom just because it, it's kind of built for DV. And so what I can do is make a little pop-up box so that when people click this button, um, it triggers a pop-up box. There have actually been some studies that show if you get them to click on a button, they're more likely to fill out the form anyway. So when I have stuff like this, when they click the button, um, my opt-in rate is probably like 60 or 70 percent because most people who click the button, they see the form, um, it's really simple and easy, and they'll just sign up. Uh, the problem is not everyone's going to click on the button. So you could also have just a pop-up form that, that shows on like exit intent or when they scroll down far enough on the page. I'll also build a really big um, opt-in box at the bottom of the page, which I'll show you later. But the idea is generally you want your opt-in offer um, on the top of the page, some people say before the fold. So before they scroll down and get lost in your content, you want to make your offer really quickly. And this is only the home page. Most people probably won't even come to my home page. They might land on a blog page. So I also want to make sure I have a really strong opt-in offer on the sidebar or in the top of my, my blog. I'm still playing around with my blog page um, and with different kinds of header types, but I could do the same thing over here. Instead of having this menu, I could just put an opt-in form on the top of my main pages um, and then on my blog pages, which I'm also still kind of figuring out. Um, and I'm playing with different headers also. I could have something like this over here that's a better opt-in offer. This isn't terrible and it, it shows up pretty clearly up here on top of the opt-in, but um, I might want to make it look better. So this is kind of option one, something kind of like this, which I think looks okay. Um, I'm tempted because I hate screwing up you know, this really nice, impactful design with a bunch of colors. I'm tempted to make these um, black icons or gray icons that change color when you mouse over the buttons. 
I could do the same thing with this um, button over here. It's a little tricky for these because they're images. I would have to put, I think, some custom code to have a mouse over effect, um, which I could do in CSS or HTML, but I'm not sure if it's worth the extra work. Um, the button is pretty easy. I can just go over here to customize the button and go to design and button. And then down here, there's the button background default color and the hover color. So I can change. I added a slight darker red for the hover. So when I mouse over it, it changes color. Um, that's fine. It's kind of subtle, but I could make it like all black. And when they mouse over it, it's red. If I didn't want to completely ruin the vibe of my design. Um, so for example, I'll go ahead and do that. It would look something like that. So it's there, they can see the offer, but when I mouse over it, it changes red, um, which I think looks a little nicer, but on mobile, they're not going to see it because they can't mouse over it like they can on desktop, um, and it's just not going to stand out as much. So probably because I really want them to sign up, that's kind of the most important thing to get them on my email list so I can start building a relationship. Um, I'll probably want to, even though I don't think it's you know the best design, I'll probably want to make this button really strong, clear red um, to stand out. And I might even want to, like I said, change these colors just because the color is distracting. So I have all the social media icons there. They can follow me. Um, it's probably a good idea to have those there in case they want to follow me. But the, all the color competes with this red button. So it probably get more conversion if these weren't so colorful, um, if I made them just solid gray or something. And there's actually a really cool trick in DV. Um, I can go in here to edit, and this is just a text icon. It's not even, it's text module. It really has nothing to do with images or anything, but under design, I can go down to filters and I can change the colors um, of everything. So I can just desaturate this whole section and make them all gray, um, which is a pretty useful little hack. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that alone. It doesn't look as good, but I think I like that it's less distracting so that my button stands out a little bit more. And it also kind of doesn't take away from the really pretty art I've got up here. So this is kind of the first option that I have. Um, I have some social media icons. I have a big button that says I have for new releases. That's fine. Another option though is to just add a box like this, a simple subscribe form. Um, I think I mentioned earlier, there are some studies that show if you have a button with a benefit and an offer, you'll actually get more signups than if you show them the form right away. But that's really something that you should test, and it might make sense to kind of make sure that they know that there's an opt-in form. So maybe they don't really get that this is an email subscription form, um, and they're not reading all the text or whatever. So something I could try to do, I'll just, for now, um, move this out of the way. I'll drag it down here. And what I had done up here, this is a three column area. So you can see this plus plus, and then this is the first one. So it's three columns. I can't just drag this and put it up there. Um, instead, I'll have to make a new one and I can just choose what I need. So I'll probably pick uh, this one. Oops, I think I picked the wrong one. Hold on. So I meant to pick kind of two thirds and then one third over here. So now I can drag these icons down here and they don't quite line up. Um, I think that's because this opt-in box that I made with Bloom, it has too much padding around the size. But I think if I go into design and spacing, I can just change the margin like I did earlier. That's one of the reasons I really like DV is that you can really just fix things and make sure things line up the way that you want them to. Um, so I'm going to delete this for now. I'd really like this to be like super slim, um, but if I played around with it some more, I could probably get it to look just the way that I want. 
Yeah, so you can see here, there's a lot of patterning from this email box. So this black goes all the way up there. So if I really want to play around with it, I need to um, find a way to get rid of all that extra patterning so that I could make this a really thin form. But anyway, the basic idea is there. Um, the home page is look like this. They scroll down a little bit. Then it would show them the social media icons and then this opt-in form that would go straight to my email list. Um, the only problem with this right now is that there's no um, text explaining what they would get. So you really want to make sure that they know what they're going to get when they sign up for something. So I'm not actually sure that I need my social media icons up here on top because um, that's not the first thing that I want them to do anyway. I would rather kind of do some credi credibility boosting or have a tagline um, or tell them what they're going to get when they sign up to my email instead of showing them like all the options or just like sign up to my newsletter. I want to try to make sure they care first and make sure they want to be on my list, which is why I'm tempted just not to get, not to use anything up here um, and just, you know, get started right with the content. But for navigation's sake, it's probably a good idea to have something like this just so they can find it and they see it um, first. So even if they scroll down, they kind of know where stuff is. It also just kind of looks more professional, I think. Another option though, is to just use a big full width bar um, that I have like down here. So I could just move um, this whole section up higher and put it right under the top menu. And then this is a, a full width opt-in bar. Um, so now it looks something like this. I would still need something up here, like a message that says sign up to my newsletter to get something. Um, and I can see how it looks on mobile if I go to mobile view. So in this case, I would have my header. The menu is shrunk on the phone, so they don't see the menu anyway. And then I have this opt-in bar um, right here. So even though it's full width on mobile devices or even on a tablet, I guess it looks like this on a tablet. Um, on a phone, it would just scale it down and look like this, which works pretty well. So I kind of like that. Um, as opposed to if you look down a little bit further, um, here's the other form that I have. And I'm not sure why or if it's just because I have too much stuff um, going on right now, but these images that I have um, don't look like they show up in the mobile view. Um, so I'd have to test this on my phone and see if this is just a bug with DV or if it's actually um, disappearing. So those are some header choices, but um, there are other options. This is kind of what I've seen a lot of other authors do. I'm going to delete this one for now. So the other option that I'm looking at um, is possibly moving some of this stuff up here. I said earlier that this menu doesn't even show up um, on mobile. Mobile is going to shrink it. So, And also, I don't necessarily need them to find their way around um, right away. I do really like having the menu below the logo. I think that looks really good. And I've seen that on most author websites. Um, they have a big header first, and then they have the menu down below. Um, I also, though, have this scrolling menu. So if you scroll down, this menu pops up. I don't need both, and I haven't really decided which one I'm going to use yet. But if I leave this menu that pops up after they scroll down, then I could get rid of this menu, even though I like the way that it looks. So if I was going to do that, um, I could do something like this. I could take these social media icons and drag them up a little higher. I'd have to do the same thing. Um, with the design and the spacing and kind of do this negative Oops. so let me try this again first I'm going to move this one out of the way what I'm going to try to do is put this same thing up here where the menu was um, I might move the social media buttons as well under this button just to kind of give them a place. Um, and I would have to go in here, highlight all of them, 
and go to center, which seems like it doesn't work because there's too many and they kind of break. So I had to go um, instead of in the text where I was because I couldn't get to center, I went to design and then to alignment under text. There's usually a way to move things around um, where you need them to go, but you might have to choose different options. Anyway, so that's all here now. I'm going to try to move this up to the top. And then if I go to design, spacing, I'm having some issues now because all of this stuff is in the same box. It's in the same blue box. Um, so actually, I'll need to move at least this one down so it's not in the same area. And then I can go here to spacing and put this backwards. When you have a lot of overlap like this, so this green box I've put up um, too far above where it's supposed to be, so it's actually hard to go up here and select, it keeps disappearing. Uh, and the solution, one solution, is you can select the green box and right click it, and then it'll stay long enough for you to go up here and edit what you want. And so I'm basically just playing and trying to get things to fit where I want them to go. And this may not look perfect right away. It's going to take a little bit of um, playing around. So now instead of this menu, if I refresh the page, it should look a bit different. So now I have this, join the readers. I've got a link here to join the review team or subscribe by email. There's a big button to sign up for new releases and then my social media um, and scroll down. That's kind of nice. It's a little bit too much text, a little bit overwhelming. It's not quite as cool as the really simple, clean style that I had before, which I think is better for branding. Um, but this is a way to fit in more stuff, more information up at the top of the page before they get down into the content. And so if I did it this way, um, then I could choose to put something else down here. And um, one of the options I think would probably be a good idea for authors is something like this. So I would have three basic categories, new releases, coming soon, today's deals. Um, so. I would always have a section up near the top of my blog, and this stuff would probably be on my homepage anyway. If, I, if they scroll down, they would probably find a section where I would have all of these things. Um, I think, and I'm still working on this page, but if you scroll way down here, well, there was a section down here for um, 99 cent deals, but here's just some new releases. So here's one section I have set up, and these are actually just blog posts. I have, um, I've customized the images to use as a featured images. But this is kind of standard WordPress blogging. Um, and then in DB, there's the option of setting up um, a blog feature. And you can choose which categories you want, to, um, you want to display. So I can set up a different category for new releases or a different category for deals, write a new blog post, and it will automatically show up in this area of my homepage. Um, these are some other ones with a different plugin. The style is just a little bit different and the read more button is clear so that looks really nice. Um, this background image is by Adam Bird. He does really nice photography. I'm just playing around. If you use any images on your blog or website, you should get permission um, and or you should link back to the person that you're, um, where the images come from. You can't just grab art and use. I've kind of been doing that because I'm playing around, um, but you need to buy the images get royalty-free stock photos. Um, for blog post headings, sometimes it's okay to, to use an image you found on the internet as long as you give attribution. If you link back to the source um, and you say where you got it from. So whenever you, like if you just use, search stuff on Google, you'd have to use Tinai 
um, to reverse look up the first usage of that image and try to find the original poster or the original artist so that you can give attribution and you can link to the right place. If you use an image and you don't attribute the right artist, that can be a problem for you later on. So it's something to keep in mind. Anyway, so this setup is kind of nice because maybe they don't want to scroll down and look through everything, or maybe it gets a little bit confusing. So really quickly, I could give them a few choices. Um, the other thing I've seen, if you write a lot of different genres, which probably isn't a great idea. If you're an author who does cross genre stuff, um, for example, I could say young adult fantasy, new adult fantasy, or urban fantasy, or I could have fantasy or sci-fi if I want to split them up that way. So you can also just kind of give them some options to funnel them into the right place to get to make sure that they're getting the content um, that they want. I like these because for new releases, it'll show the books that I've just put out. And so um, they could click to read more about those books. They would read the first chapter or the blurbs or the book reviews, and then they could click over to buy the book. So I want to funnel them that way. Um, coming soon would be the works in progress. So maybe I have teasers or excerpts of stuff that I'm working on. When you're writing books, you could just take like, if you write a nice, you know, few paragraphs, you can just throw that on your blog and say, this is what I'm working on. Maybe a little bit of a lifestyle update, um, which I think is important if you're trying to build a relationship with your readers and also just get them excited. Um, if you do have graphic design that has teasers to kind of tell them what you're working on, what it's like, what genre it's in. Um, you could, for example, tie into popular culture stuff like Game of Thrones is, is the final season is um, just started right now when I'm making this video. So I could, for example, do a breakdown of episode one, season eight of Game of Thrones. And by the way, I'm working on this epic fantasy um, royalty dragon shifter novel that I think you're really gonna like if you like Game of Thrones. So you could do a little bit of tie into um, stuff that's already going on in popular culture just to be relevant and also let people know what you're working on. And then today's deals, um, you don't always have to be running deals. My plan for this website is I have two or three standalone books that don't really sell very well. Um, and I've tried running ads to them at $3.99, but I think it's going to work better for me to just leave them at 99 cents because they're in Kindle Unlimited. So I'll also get page reads as long as the rank stays higher. So if I put them, if I have a featured section on my homepage um, or on my website with deals and I just feature maybe three books that are going to always be 99 cents um, and I get a couple hundred people to my website a day, if some of those people buy those, you know, deals and they buy the 99 cent books, it gives them, because not everybody's looking for cheap reads. Once they're fans, um, they might be looking for, you know, the next book or the new release. And if they just want freebies, they can sign up to get a free book um, from the menu or something. But some people are price conscious. And if you do have some deals, some people will probably click over and see what they are. And it might be enough of a reason to buy your book. If they don't, they haven't read your book before, or maybe they're kind of fans, but they haven't read these particular books. Maybe these are books that they've missed. Um, they could click on the deals and, and buy those 99 cent deals. I think these are, right now I just have this simple kind of placeholders. These would work better, I think, if you have um, more of an actual content, if you have maybe a book cover or a short description um, or something. I'm not going to break down my whole homepage and all the stuff I'm planning on doing with my homepage because I'll make another video on that um, later. This menu also doesn't belong here, but I haven't totally made all my decisions yet about this header section, so I'm kind of just leaving some leftover pieces. I'll have to delete them and clean them up um, later. But what I'd probably have under this section um, is a featured book. So down here I have a really nice um, full image background. I've chosen not to use 3D images, which I could do. I could make a 3D image for these, um, a 3D mock-up. I'll show you what I mean in the um, media library. So something like this, you can get these 3D mockups made. I actually have a tool um, that makes 3D mockups on DIYBookCovers.com and I could play around with this and make it look pretty good. But if you have really good covers, um, I think you want your covers to be as clear and as big as possible. So I've just chosen to go with the full um, actual cover to kind of have it more close up. And then a little bit down here, I can have 
more information and then start reading. I could have a link to Amazon, like click to buy it or read the first chapter now. Um, I might choose to make that decision later. Right now, I just want them to start reading and they'll go straight to chapter one, basically. I want to actually get them in the story as early as possible. I think I'll have more conversion if I can get them to read the first few paragraphs or even the first chapter. And at the end of the first chapter, I would say now you can, you know, sign up to get three more chapters or go buy the book um, on Amazon. I've also chosen, because this is my homepage, um, thinking about how it's going to look on mobile view, I haven't added very much text here. I could have added a few more reviews or something, um, but you can see how it looks on mobile. The cover is going to be first. It actually looks great on mobile because um, they'll see like the header. And actually, this is kind of interesting, but this um, feature that I had set up up here, it doesn't look like it's working right for mobile. So might not actually be able to get it working. Before, when I had the menu up there, just the menu, um, it showed up here on mobile. So this extra block feature up in the um, in the full with back, background like I had might not work on mobile. I'll have to test that out a little bit more. But if I scroll down, um, I get the first featured book cover really well, and then this text, which looks pretty good on mobile. I wouldn't really want it to be more information than this. Um, and then if you scroll down a little bit more, I have my blog post with the new releases, basically. So here's three more new releases. And that's probably what I want to have pretty high up um, on my website. You can see down here, it looks like this. And these are just duplicated. That's why they're double. So I can just delete this whole section um, and only feature three. And then there's also this little menu down here. I can customize this so that the numbers stand out a little bit. But I think it's fine to only show like three of your newest releases. And then they could scroll back um, to go through and find other books that they're looking for. Anyway, so those are just some things to think about. If you're thinking about you know, what you want to have in your header section. Um, the other thing that I've seen that works really well um, is a full width slider. So I've chosen, at least for right now, not to do this on my homepage because I really want to have that full, impactful branding um, that I've set up. However, that might be a mistake. Um, the main idea of a slider is to show a lot of stuff or like new announcements or whatever on top. So for new releases to have a, a big forward slider on your homepage might be a good idea. I'm probably going to do this on my books page. But for example, I'll show you really quickly how this can work. DV has its own um, kind of module for having a slider. So if I edit it, I've already got three slides um, here. So right now there's this one with no picture. And I have this one that has a picture that I just duplicated. Um, one time. So I'm going to go in and customize this really fast. Um, the first one, I'll just go like this. I could change the colors and everything, but I'm going to do this really fast. Um, I'm not going to add a book cover. Instead, I'll go down here to background. And I just chose the same art that I was using um, in the beginning. So I can't fully customize everything this way. Um, I do have some ability here, so I wonder like if I could sneak in um, those social media icons. I could put them in here underneath or above the button, but I don't really have full customization to do a lot with this slide. Um, but still, that could be an okay kind of a welcome message. Um, I might be able to add my logo. But so here's the heading. Um, here's the button text. I think I could go change um, the button style and make it red like that other one was. And get rid of this border. Um, I could even probably add a shadow behind it. I could also customize this font and make the heading kind of whatever size that I want. What I try to do under slide settings is put the logo up on top of the text. 
Um, I haven't found a way to do that. Um, but the other thing I could do is add my logo underneath the header. which looks something like this. Um, and I can actually get rid of this title altogether um, and use my other logo, which has the title built in as part of the image. And then it looks kind of like that, which isn't too terrible. I can't totally design everything and make it look exactly how I want, but that's pretty close to what I had before. Um, and so the benefit is that now I can go in and this is just the first welcome message. I could have something like a tagline or welcome or sign up, whatever, um, but then I could go straight into my other slide. So this could be coming soon. It's a new release. And then in the third slide, um, I can just change the background um, to this one and then go up and change the book cover. So now my website would look something like this. Um, I could still add that stuff down here, like the social media icons um, or an opt-in box, or maybe even just the menu because I took it out from up here. But then they could click over. I think I can set this to auto speed maybe every five seconds or something so that they could see the first op offer, which is a new release. Um, this image is looking stretched. Um, I'm not sure exactly why, but I think that's just a glitch. It looks like um, they stretch the cover because I have a really widescreen monitor, but uh, this would look really good on most devices and even in mobile view. Um, I think what happens in mobile view is they actually take out the book cover. So that's one thing to know in mobile view. You would get rid of the image of your slide, um, which is kind of a problem because even though like the main one might look okay, I could add like the book cover up on top if I was trying to optimize for mobile view, but if I just had the slider image on the top of my blog, then they would see this stuff, um, which could still be okay. Like you have the full background image, which matches the book cover. You could have your blurb or description of the book, and then they could still click and they could find out more about the project. So it's not the end of the world. Um, and on desktop, it looks really sharp. So this would be kind of the welcome image. And then it would have these two featured images um, so for book promotion, or even if you only have a couple of books, you could set this up really nicely. You could add um, something like read the first chapter or buy now on Amazon. You could add something like a review. So you could build this out and add more content. Um, you could probably add some links like, you know, add it to your Goodreads library or start reading on Amazon Kindle Unlimited. So this is just another option that you could have for your homepage um, author website. One of the reasons I may not do this is because I do think it's important to optimize for mobile and I do like showing my book covers. So at least like on the book pages um, or the, I might have a page for every book or I might just have like a books page where they would click and look at all my books. Um, I might not use this slider just because I don't want the book cover to disappear on mobile. So the other option, um, I think I added down here it's just a big full width. Um, it's a big full width image with the book cover. It's not a slider. It's just I added the book cover and then I added this call to action text. Um, and the nice thing about this, I also I think this looks really nice. Like having this up on the header. Um, if you wanted to just feature one in one book or like if you have one main opt-in offer, 
it could be a new release or for example a series starter or the, your free book offer even um, so instead of having this general brand website where I set a sign up to get your releases because that's probably not going to convert very well anyway um, instead I could have this full page image background with a book cover I could have some reviews and quotes um, start reading here's some reviews I put up and then down here I could have a big call to action or I could add that opt-in form down at the bottom like sign up and get this book for free because you're offering them something very specific um, you probably get a lot higher conversion on that opt-in form so basically just making your home page one really big landing page for one very specific book project um, might actually get a lot more email conversion so that's something I might test I still prefer to have um, a really tight homepage brand kind of like this because I think it looks really nice but I think the other options are either using a slider like this so that you can feature a bunch of different content really quickly um, you could for example I have like five or six different series starters so I could just cycle through um, all of the first books that I have available and then instead of click here I'd probably change this to start reading um, so they could just click through and look for a book that looks interesting really quickly and then they would just click on something to start reading I'll change this now so you can see it um, customizing the button I could change the fonts or whatever and I could even change the button just to make it you know stand out a little bit more um, you do want to be careful with stuff like colors you want it to look as attractive as possible um, you don't want to throw a whole bunch of different contrasting colors to make things confusing but so this would be an alternative way to, to set up the home page or the header of your website and then the other final alternative I think is just to have a complete featured image section that kind of dominates your entire website um, that they can't really avoid so like could be your new release that you really are trying to sell and you really want to drive clicks to that Amazon page um, or you could just have an opt-in offer for a free book and just make it instead of like one little thing like here it's you know somewhere on my website I might say sign up to get this book for free um, on the bottom of my website I also have this huge email offer so I say free book get a free fantasy novel but this would convert better if I put the picture of the book um, and gave them a sample of the first chapter um, and then I had an opt-in box so I could say start reading that would go to like chapter one and then I could have this big opt-in box at the bottom um, there's ways to add in opt-in boxes in DV I can click and add a new menu and just go to contact form I think or maybe opt-in box um, email opt-in but because I use bloom to build this other opt-in box um, what I'm actually going to do is go to code and add this little um, short code to the form that I built and then that looks like this and because it's black background um, it actually looks pretty nice because I didn't make it in the DV Builder, if I want to edit this, I'd have to go back into my plugins um, and look at the Bloom form that I made and then customize this text a little bit, like, you know, get this book for free, sign up. Um, if I had something like this as my main homepage, I'd probably get a lot more opt ins for that free book because I've really featured it. So that's another thing that's probably pretty smart that I might test out and see if I get more opt-ins that way. So I hope this video has given you a bunch of um, different possible um, things to have on your home page. You kind of want to keep in mind like a lot of people are going to go to your home page, some people are going to click around to your books page, um, some people might stumble upon your blog, so you want to make sure you have a lot of good stuff in different places of your website, but uh, you kind of have to make choices about what you're going to show them first. So either you're really featuring your content like one amazing book sign up to get this book um, or you're trying to squeeze in a bunch of different stuff like I've tried to do on this page with the deals the coming soon the new releases 
um, which might be a good idea. Or you can have something like a slide bar, um, a slideshow, so you can scroll through and, and feature a lot of different things um, at the same time. So those are a few options I think are probably pretty good ideas for um, authors especially.